Hey guys, welcome to Bucket Ponds. Here's an example of the completed project and we're going to jump right into how it was made. This is my refrigerator recycled aquarium. Here we have an old refrigerator that was donated by my neighbor. Uh, nothing really wrong with it. The compressor doesn't work, so we're going to make use of it in a different way. Uh, first take those grills out. Then we've got to get this uh, lighting fixture removed. Pretty easy. We're just going to cut that and tuck the wires back up in there. Nothing too fancy. Uh, here we have some thick plastic that I'm going to use as a pond liner. Uh, this is mostly used to cover vehicles or in construction projects, but I happen to have some laying around, so it's what we're going to use today. Uh, as you can see, I'm filling it up. I've just tucked the liner in there, pretty simple. It's a little dirty looking, and this liner has been laying around my yard for a while, uh, but I'm okay with that. You know, we're not making something for a display. We're making a functional fish breeding, snail breeding, plant growing pond out here. But so far the project looks pretty good. Uh, once again, I'm not worried about a little debris in here. Uh, I saw people set up tanks like these online using old refrigerators, but uh, they just slapped them together. They just filled the fridge up and threw some fish in there. And if you know anything about this aquarium stuff, that's just not the way that things are done. For substrate, I'm going to be using these Vigoro River Pebbles from Home Depot. I want to say the bag's about five bucks, uh, but I have about half a bag here. And they're completely aquarium safe. I've used them in several of my projects, uh, but they are really chalky. You have to wash them. But other than that, they make uh, for a fine substrate. And these aren't for decoration. These are just to add a place for beneficial bacteria to grow in the new pond, uh, which is very important. Uh, these rocks increase the surface area for the uh, bacteria to grow. And once again, these are not ornamental. You won't even see these, uh, but they do provide a function in the tank and a necessary function. And these are nice pond stones, but uh, once again, they're not for decoration. These are just for the beneficial bacteria and to uh, protect the bottom of the plastic just a little bit. Uh, now, here we go. This is uh, just a few hours after I put everything together. I've added three of my bucket ponds into here, five gallon bucket ponds, complete with the plants and the fish that used to dwell within those ponds. Uh, everything you see here has been growing in my backyard, you know, near the bucket ponds headquarters uh, for about two years. And uh, carefully cultivated these plants and animals for this very purpose. Uh, I didn't use all of my bucket ponds, only about three of them. Uh, but yeah, this sort of kickstart this process and to have everything already uh, adapted and ready to go. Now my uh, cambusia, my uh, mosquito fish, they're kind of like guppies. Uh, they're in here. They're a bit shy and reclusive and sometimes hard to see, uh, but they are in here. And there's my uh, pistia, my water lettuce. It's very easy to grow. This pond weed here, these green leafy plants are extremely easy to grow and I'm very happy to have them. Uh, as time goes by, they'll start to stand up more and form a cohesive bog mat, which will protect the uh, mosquito fish from birds and predators. Uh, but yeah, so far the project looks great. We've got some plants in there, we've got some fish in there. Things are starting to settle down. And we're going to fast forward just a few hours and see what's going on. We have about 12 hours after setup. You can see the plants are starting to uh, relax and spread out. Things are looking more green. Things are starting to settle down. Uh, I used uh, three bucket ponds to start this. They were in fact Wallstad buckets using the Wallstad method. So the water will look black for a while. Uh, there's a lot of nutrients in here. A small amount of potting soil. Uh, but overall that's exactly what we want. And we're bringing all this beneficial bacteria, all the little creatures that have come to us over the last few years and we're channeling them into this larger project. Uh, rain tree. This provides shade to the pond. I would not set up a pond like this in direct sunlight. Uh, because at least where I live, it would actually cook the plants and the pets inside. They need a little shade. Here's another look at the surface of the pond. This is almost 24 hours after setup. The plants are starting to relax, and I'm starting to see more of the snails moving around. I'll see if I can't get a shot of them here in a second. Uh, this is my largest bucket pond I've put together so far, and it appears to be my most successful, too. Up until this point, I've worked mainly with five gallon buckets, uh, thus the name of my channel. Here's one of the bladder snails now, one of the larger ones. Uh, but here's a look at the tank, 24 hours after setup. You can see the plants are definitely starting to uh, spread out and to stand up. Uh, over time, that pond weed 
those green leafy plants, they'll form a nice standing bog mat along with the duckweed that I've included and the Florida mud midget, which is another type of duckweed. Uh, the color on the water should clear up very soon, and in places it's already pretty clear. Um, these buckets did have some diatoms and things growing in them, and you'll notice that some flowers have fallen into here, and that's okay. Uh, any leaves or flowers that fall in here, my snails will eventually consume all of that plant matter. And we'll turn that into more snails. And there's the buckets uh, that I was talking about. That's where they grew up. Uh, yeah, those buckets have been running for about two years, maybe a year, depending on which bucket. And I just channeled them all directly into the main container here, along with uh, about 30 gallons of extra water. And uh, it's working out really well. Now for the final step, uh, it wouldn't be a bucket pond style aquarium without my creature collection. So we'll take samples from my various cultures and we'll bring them out to the pond. Uh, these are Paramecia here. Um, these little creatures, they help to break down waste in the tank and debris and uh, to consume rotten plant material and things like that and turn it into fertilizer and food for the other creatures. Um, the creatures themselves can be eaten as well. The mosquito fish are always grateful for live foods like these, and uh, I've even seen the uh, bladder snails consume detritus worms in times of need and stress. So uh, they're a very valuable species, and uh, as you know by my channel, if you've seen my other videos, I work a lot with these detritus worms, and they're one of my favorite creatures to play with. So yeah, that's about it. Adding them to the pond is the final step to establishing a healthy ecosystem and kickstarting the uh, cycling process of this new pond. So anyway guys, I'm Bucket Ponds. This is my recycled refrigerator aquarium. This is outdoors in southern Georgia, USA. Uh, we have pretty mild winters here, uh, but that being said, the fish and creatures that I've included can easily withstand the low temperatures, and I've even seen them survive under ice for a brief amounts of time. Uh, but yeah guys, that's it. My name's Bucket Ponds, and this is my uh, recycled refrigerator bucket pond aquarium uh, upwards of 40 or 50 gallons something like that and I saw a lot of these online but none of these videos were in English so I wanted to go ahead and present to you an English version of a refrigerator turned into a fish tank video uh, along with my commentary and my actual methods of pond setup which uh, vary a, a great deal from most people who build aquariums I will come back here in the coming months or, you know, in a few days, and we'll do more videos about this tank very soon. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Bucket Ponds, and this is the Recycled Refrigerator Fish Tank. Hey guys, please remember to like and subscribe. I work really hard on these videos, and it helps a lot.